up guys, it's Mark from Limo Marketer, back with another video for you all. Today I want to talk about conversion rate optimization. So conversion rate optimization is just a fancy name for making as much money from your website as you possibly can. It's an often overlooked piece of the puzzle with paid advertising. And by paid advertising I mean Google Ads and Bing Ads. The reason I say it's often overlooked is the impact your landing page or website can have on your results can two times to three times the result, the amount of revenue you generate from your online advertising campaign. And it's something that you really only have to pay for one time, but it keeps working for you day after day, week after week, month after month making your campaign better, generating more revenue for your business. So whenever I stumble upon a website or a landing page that isn't built to convert, I always shake my head because it's very short-sighted and it's, it's almost lazy, but I think for most business owners, they just don't realize how important it is. They think if I send traffic to a page, people are going to book, people are going to be calling, people are going to be requesting quotes. And unfortunately, that couldn't be further from the truth. If you've watched my previous videos, you know how important it is to make sure you're getting relevant uh, traffic to your pages. But that's just really half the battle. The other half of the battle is when you get those qualified buyers to your page, you want to have them take action. And so there's certain elements on the page we want to look for in order to get them to take that action. And this is very much like um, when you get those leads, uh, having a sales process in place that converts that lead into a customer. So really, there's multiple conversions along your sales funnel. There's going to be the, the traffic to your page, the initial traffic to your page that are clicking on your ad. Uh, there's going to be, the, from the traffic to that page, the leads that that page generates. And then there's also, uh, from that lead, uh, converting that lead into a customer is, is just as, if not more important. And then making sure that customer keeps coming back and using your service over and over. Uh, when you put all of those elements in place, that's how you can start generating uh, customers on demand and keeping those clients because paid advertising and all online advertising is expensive when you only have that client one time, when you're just booking one job with them. When it becomes more feasible is when they use your service again and again. And so those businesses that are good at that, client retention, can afford to spend more money on online advertising. And I believe it was Dan Kennedy who said, the business who can spend the most to acquire a customer always wins because you can outspend your competitors. But I don't wanna get off on a tangent because today is about conversion rate optimization. And so the elements that are important for conversion rate optimization are things like, Number one, so this is a landing page I drew, and uh, a lot of my landing pages that I do have a similar format. And so these are the really big major things that drive the results. When you look, when you search online for conversion rate optimization tips, you'll see dozens, sometimes 50 or more things you want on your page to improve the conversion rate. I'm not gonna go over anything and everything. I wanna stick to uh, the 20% that drives the 80% of the results, okay? So this is by no means an in-depth conversation about conversion rate optimization. This is that 20%. So first off, very important, you want to have your phone number above the fold. So first off, to define that, above the fold means when you land on the page, when you land on the website, it's everything you see before you start scrolling because a lot of people, they land on a page, they leave. So it becomes that much more important that they find what they're looking for right in front of them, that they don't have to scroll for it. 
So number one, I still see to this day, I'll land on websites where I can't find the phone number when I land on the page. It's not on the top, and if it is on the top, it's written like this, right? And it's not clickable. So we want our phone number huge, and we want, you know, a call to action next to it. Call now. A call to action is just like, fill out this form, get your quote, call now, book now. That's a call to action, and you want to have those throughout your landing page or website, the page people land on. So number one, having that phone number large, and you'll see 5466, I've done so many worked with so many limo companies that I know 5466 spells limo. So uh, you have your big phone number here that's clickable. You have, you know, your logo up here, the name of your company. I always like to put the location and the service I'm targeting. For Google and Bing Ads campaigns, it helps to have uh, you know, your keywords and your service type, you want your keywords to match what it says on the page itself. And so that's going to give you a better quality score. Also, it lets people know, hey, I'm in the right place. This person services the location I was looking for, and they're, they're offering the service type I'm looking for. Now, what I didn't put here, which I'll do a little stick figure because I can't draw very well, I like to have what's called a hero shot above the fold, and all that is is a picture of someone. Now, let's say you're a limo company that fo focuses on corporate travel. Uh, the photos I like to use are the ones where it shows a business traveler in the back seat, in the suit, um, going to his destination, smile on his face, and I even like it more uh, when that person is looking at my call to action button. So let's say this is a form, and I should have actually drawn this down here a little bit more. And then this right here is going to be your get quote, or get a quote, but I'm not gonna be able to fit that there. So I like it when the, the hero shot, the person's looking right at the get quote button. Because what, what happens is our eyes, when we see someone looking at something, our eyes immediately go to what they're looking at, right? So we want people focusing on this get a quote button. And I noticed when I added that to my page, I noticed the conversion rates went up. Not a ton, but even a 20%, a 15% increase means a 15 to 20% increase in your leads, 15 to 20% increase in your revenue. So, so you want uh, the location, the service, a hero shot. Now, if you're a company that focuses on the retail side of the limo business, I like to have a lot of people having fun on a party bus or in a limo, um, having a good time. And so many times I'll include a photo like that um, as the hero shot. Now, this is a huge piece so this isn't going to actually say form on your website, but that's what this is. So I liked, my favorite type of forms for limo companies are a one step, get a quick quote form. Now I notice a lot of you watching this are probably using some sort of online booking form. There's lots of them out there, uh, like uh, Limo Anywhere, Book.Limo, uh, RideBits, tons of online booking forms. So I don't love just having that, and here's why. Those are not conversion tools, okay? That's to let your current clients book online. So you do want that option on your website, but you don't want that as your only form above the fold on your site. This is very important that you hear this, guys, and think about it. Here's the reason it doesn't work. Number one, they fill out their information, and they usually hit select vehicle. That's how most online booking forms work. And by information, they're not filling out their name, phone number, email. They're just filling out their, their coordinates, their destination, um, <clears throat> their destination and their starting location and the date. So the next step goes to where they select a vehicle and it has pricing. So it's already giving them a quote. 
So what they typically will do, if they even get to that second step, is they're going to see the price and then go shop around. And once they've left, you just spent money to get that person to your page and that money is gone forever. That's not the, the, the only reason those forms don't convert well. So we're on the second step, right? Some people will see the price, hit book their vehicle. Then there's a third step where you usually have to uh, register as a guest or uh, sign into your account. And then there's the fourth step where you ask for a credit card. Now, asking for a credit card for someone who just visited your site, they are what we call in the online marketing community, that's cold traffic, okay? They don't know you, they don't know your business, and asking for their credit card when they first meet you is like asking someone to marry you on your first date. Those forms do not convert well at all. Uh, currently, I'm tracking about five of my clients who have those forms. We're gonna end up switching them over to the other form, but I wanted to gather the data. I always thought that it didn't convert well, but I wanted to make sure I had the data to prove it, and I finally do, and those forms convert at less than 1%. To give you an idea, a one-step get a quote form, I see typically converts anywhere at the low end, 15%, at the high end, 30%. Okay, so think about that. That's 15 times as many conversions. Now, keep in mind, these are people requesting a quote. These aren't necessarily people that are going to book. However, let's just say on average, this form converts at 20%. That's 20 leads for every one booking you get from the form. So those 20 leads, if you're even closing 15% of those, that could lead to three jobs instead of one. There's more work involved, but I have to ask you this, would you rather make three times as much money from your online advertising campaign with more, with more work involved, or would you rather make you know, only 33% of what you would have made with one of those forms and there's less work involved? Now only you can answer that for your own business, but for my clients, especially the ones with sales staffs, I recommend that they use a one-step quote form. And the forms that we've been using lately for them, really, they've had two tabs, really. One's a quote tab, which is already selected, and the other is book now. And when they click this tab, it sends them to your booking page. Now, if you want to find out a little bit more about that and see how we can implement that for your business, go ahead and leave a comment on the video below and I will have my team get in touch with you. Because if you're currently using one of those online booking forms, you're getting a third of the possible business or, or actually maybe even less. Because again, sometimes these forms convert up to 30%. That's 30 leads for every one booking you would get with a booking form. So some other pieces you want are, you wanna have testimonials, okay? So I always like to grab these from my clients' Yelp profiles or their, their Google profiles. I wanna find real reviews. I like to find the image of the person that left the review, even have their name. It makes it more real if you just write the review a lot of people are suspicious of things like that. So have the picture of the person who left the review, have the review itself, make sure the review is a service that, um, the service they are reviewing is the actual service that the page is talking about. So for instance, if you have a landing page that focuses on weddings, you don't want all the reviews to be about a corporate limo service, right? You want them to be uh, hopefully brides talking about what a great experience it was with your company. So other than that, on the bottom here, having a picture of your fleet, another call to action here. Um, you want calls to action throughout the page. I typically like to have one, uh, one or two at the top, you know, one here next to the phone number, uh, the get a quote button, that's a call to action, one in the middle of the page, and then one at the very bottom, which I didn't have room to put below services, but I usually put one there. And so, once you get these elements on the page, you're going to find that the number of quote requests you get will dramatically increase. 
And so if you're sending traffic to your website, you can still add all of these elements to it. Now I always recommend a landing page because a landing page doesn't have any navigation at the top. And so what I found is when you have all that navigation at the top, people start clicking around on different buttons, they go to different pages, and when you look at the analytics, they go to these other pages and oftentimes leave. Okay, so we want to keep the people on uh, the, the visitor on your landing page. We want to make sure we provide the information they're looking for on that page. That's another thing I oftentimes see with landing pages is while you do want to be a minimalist, you don't want too little information. So you want to make sure the information, the questions they might have are answered on that page because that's going to improve your conversion rate as well. And so conversion rate, it's just the number. So it's the number, uh, number of visitors. So number of visitors and then number of leads. Number of leads divided by the number of visitors. So let's say a page gets 25 leads for every 100 visitors. Uh, can't spell the deck. Uh, visitors. That equals a 25% conversion rate. And there you have it, guys. So again, this is just kind of the basics of building your website and landing page for conversion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you need some help making your website or landing page convert better, please leave a comment below. My team will get in touch with you. Now, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like it. Uh, please comment below. Let me know what you thought about the video. And I will see you guys next time.